Hey, what's going on guys? Jay's Two Cents here. And if I had a dollar for every question I was ever asked involving power supplies, well then I would have a lot of dollars. So today we're gonna go ahead and take one of the most common topics I'm asked about, and that being how to choose the right power supply. Now, when it comes to power supplies, there's an awful lot of spec information and there's an awful lot of general information. Now, today we're going to talk a little bit more towards the generalized side of how to choose the right power supply. And I'm going to give you guys some specific information that could be important to you, but we're going to be talking today mostly from the perspective of the first time builder. Now, obviously, when it comes to choosing a power supply, there can be an awful lot of choices. I mean, power supplies. There are just so many of them and so many different nominal wattages and peak wattages and continuous output and 12 volt rails and ampers. It's just a lot of information. And if you're a first time builder, you could really get caught up in some of the numbers. And let's face it, a lot of the numbers just aren't as important as others when it comes to power supplies. Now, there's a few things I wanna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about things like modular versus semi-modular versus non-modular. We're gonna talk about the 80 plus rating. We're gonna talk about 12 volt rails and ampers and as well as some recommendations. One other thing we're gonna talk about too is continuous power versus peak power. I'm gonna try and keep it as basic and as simple as possible. Now it goes without saying that the power supply is quite often the most overlooked component in a PC build. It also can be argued that it is one of the most, if not the most important piece in your computer. Quite often I'll see people send me PC part picker links to check out their builds and tell me, you know, get my information or my opinion on what I think about their build. And very often I'll see things like 780 Ti's or 980's or SLI configs. And then they'll just get like the cheapest, most bare bones, most simple power supply they can find from some Chinese knockoff brand. And I'm thinking to myself, good God, what are you doing? Now the power supply is easily the heart of the entire system. It is pumping all of the blood or in this case, electricity through your system. Every single component in your system from the optical drive to the hard drives to the motherboard, the CPU, the PCI Express, the graphics cards, the fans, the water cooling pump, the lighting, everything is derived and being powered by electricity. And that power plant is your power supply. So if you cheap out and you get one that takes a dump, it could just quit or it could take some things out with it. That being your CPU or God forbid your graphics card. Now with that said, let's go ahead and talk about wattages. More often than not, people get hung up on the total maximum output, 500 watts, 600 watts, 1000 watts. And they don't really think about other things that are important like 12 volt rails, the number of 12 volt rails, the total amps and things like that. Now I'm gonna kind of give you some generalized uh, recommendations here real quick. If you're gonna be building a PC that's using one graphics card, I don't care what graphics card that is, if it's a single GPU card, there are dual GPU cards out there like the 295X2 and the, Mar the 760 Mars and of course things like the Titan Z that do have a little bit higher power requirements. We're gonna to toss those aside for a moment. If you're building a single GPU rig, you rarely are going to need anything more than 500 watts from a reputable power supply. You just don't. In fact, I did a video last year where I took my GTX uh, 680 and it was fully water-cooled and fans and lights and everything, and it barely pulled 340 watts from the wall. Now you'll understand what from the wall means when we start talking about 80 plus ratings. So if you're building a PC and you only have one graphics card, you rarely need anything more than 500 watts. Now when it comes to 12 volt rails, often people will get confused because they'll see things like single rail, dual rail, quad rail, and they just are like, what does that even mean? Basically, it is the main bus of the power supply that is supplying the 12 volt circuit. Now there's two main components in your system that really rely on a quality 12 volt rail that being your CPU and your graphics cards. Now, yeah, there are some other things in your system that rely on 12 volt, like fans and the optical drives and things like that. However, 12 volt is what's powering your main components, graphics cards and CPU. So you want to make sure that your 12 volt rails are delivering adequate amps. Now, all of a sudden, everyone started to get confused. Like, wait, we're talking about wattages, we're talking about 12 volt rails, we're talking about amps. Here are some general guidelines. You wanna make sure that you are getting at least 18 amps out of your 12 volt rail. Now that's kind of a bare minimum. And I know some people are already going, well, you're gonna need more than that, Jay. Yeah, I know that, we're gonna get to that. 
you want 18 amps bare minimum. Now, if you're gonna be running something with a little bit more enthusiast class graphics cards, like a 780 or maybe a 980 or something like that, you wanna bump that number up to something that is delivering 24 amps on the 12 volt rail. That's gonna be kind of like your guideline there. Minimum of 18, 24 amps is good. Now, when it comes to multiple rails, you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind that rails and amps do not necessarily stack. What that means is if you have one 12 volt rail that's delivering 18 amps and another one that is delivering 16 amps, it often doesn't actually add up to 34 amps of total 12 volt rail power. You're gonna to have to look at the specs and see what they're actually delivering. Sometimes they'll only add up to 30 amps or 28 amps or whatever it may be. Now with that said, if you're gonna be running an SLI config or a Crossfire config with two graphics cards, you want a minimum of 34 amps delivered on the 12 volt rail. Remember, look at what the deliver specifications are. Don't just add them up. So here's a recap. 18 amps minimum, I don't care what kind of system it is, 18 amp minimum on the 12 volt rail. 24 amps if you're running an enthusiast grade graphics card, which would be like a 780 or a 770 or a 280X or something like that. And a 34 amp delivered on the 12 volt rail if you're running an SLI or Crossfire config. That's pretty basic. Now when it comes to wattages, the only thing you need to know is that there's kind of two different ratings there. There's a continuous and a peak. Continuous simply means at all times you're gonna be able to get a maximum wattage output of at least a particular number. Oftentimes you will see peak power, which means that the power supply is able to deliver a X amount of wattage for a short duration of time. So peak power is not something you should be too interested in. You should be interested in continuous power. All right, so keep that in mind. Continuous power, that's the magic number when it comes to wattage. That means you're guaranteed that number at pretty much all times when it comes to the power supply. Peak, I, they, it's just kind of a number thing. They put it on the box to say, we've got a 16,000 watt power supply. But really we can only continuously deliver 9,000. You know, just as kind of a, let's just throw it out there with crazy numbers. That's kind of what they're doing because a bigger number looks more enticing on the packaging. But you want to be aware of shoddy advertisement as well when it comes to those numbers. So when it comes to wattage, peak is not important. Continuous is the most important factor when it comes to wattages. Now, 80 plus rating is one of those other things that people tend to get really caught up on, not really knowing what it means and just assuming that the more precious the metal in the rating, the better the power supply was. And that's not really the case. Now, 80 plus was a standard that was implemented a while back when it comes to measuring the efficiency of a power supply. And when it comes to energy efficiency, they deemed anything that was 80% efficient was put on a list, which was called the 80 plus list. And it was just power supplies that were put on that list that you could look at and say, hey, this one's energy efficient. Yay, I'm gonna save money on my power bills and I'm doing the environment a lot of good. And then they started getting more efficient and more efficient and more efficient. And then they came up with different bracketing of efficiency, which is what you guys know of today of, you know, 80 plus, 80 plus bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and now titanium. Well, what does it all mean? Basically guys, you have alternating current coming from the wall in your house and your PC uses direct current or AC and DC. So the power supply really is taking that energy, it is converting it to DC and it is regulating it. That is why power supplies should really be considered important when it comes to not cheaping out. When you've got something that's taking all of that 120 volts or 210 or 220 or whatever it may be in your home and converting it into a direct current for your PC, if that takes a dump, you can see power surges would be kind of a big deal. You don't want to cheap out on your power supply. So if you need 500 watts delivered to your system and I have a platinum rated power supply that's going to give me 93% efficiency at 500 watts, then that means I'm really going to be pulling 535 watts from the wall to get that 500 watts delivered. So the lower the efficiency, the higher the number. So if you had an 87% efficient or an 88% efficient, then you're actually going to be losing 13 or 12% of that energy pulled from the wall due to heat, which means it's going to pull more energy from the wall to give you a delivered number. That's the way that the efficiency works. Now it doesn't necessarily mean a platinum rated power supply is better in terms of reliability or parts than a gold rated power supply. You'll notice here I have a few different power supplies of the same brand. I've got two 1600 watt EVGAs, a G2 and a P2. They're pretty much the exact same power supply. It's just one of these is a little more efficient than the other. And it happens that way a lot when it comes to power supplies. So really, if you're gonna be building a big rig, like, uh, and I'm not mean, I don't mean a truck, 
obviously. Well, that'd be kind of cool, though, if you had just one big giant trailer full of PCs and it was like a mobile LAN. I think I should do that. I should build a big rig with a mobile LAN party in the back. But you start running more graphics cards and eight core CPU, 16 threads and lots of RAM and lots of lights and lots of water cooling pumps and things like that, then the efficiency could start to matter because you start pulling a lot of power from the wall. And unlike the 10 watt or 20 watt differences you would see on graphics cards when it comes to efficiency, you could talk several hundred watts of difference when it comes to total uh, system efficiency and system usage. It really adds up over time to where you could save a lot of money. Now, the last thing we want to talk about here here is modular, fully modular, semi-modular, all of that. And a lot of people ask me all the time, Jay, do I need a modular power supply? Oh, I don't know what to do. Basically, all that means, guys, is the cables on the back of the power supply are either permanently affixed or they are removable. It makes no difference to the efficiency rating or the reliability of the power supply whatsoever. If you guys want to do a clean build and you want it to be as tidy as possible, you don't want all those extra cables hanging out. So if you're doing a build where you care about how cable management is handled, then modular power supplies or fully modular power supplies may be for you. Now, semi-modular power supplies, typically the 20 plus four pin and at least one PCI Express cable and the CPU EPS power cable cannot be removed. And typically all the other cables like the SATA power and four pin Molex and extra PCI Express power cables can be disconnected so that you can remove the cables you're not needing. If it's an SLI configured uh, power supply or SLI certified and you're only running, run, running one graphics card, you don't need the other cables on there. So they're just more to have to deal with. The downside to modular power supplies is you may lose the cables at some point if you decided to go SLI later. And if you don't have them, then you're kind of SOL. So that's one of the downsides to modular is if you need some of those cables later, you better be a tidy person and you know where you kept them and you can find them later. Uh, Non-modular power supplies just means every cable is stuck to the back. You can't remove it no matter what. And generally they're just gonna be kind of ugly to look at with all those extra cables. All right guys, this video may have been a little bit longer than normal, but I wanted to kind of answer some questions I get all the time when it comes to power supplies. I hope it's helped you guys. My general recommendation, if you have a single graphics card, 500 watt power supply, if you're going SLI, right around an 850, three way and up, if you guys are looking at doing that kind of config, I sure hope you know the basics already when it comes to power supplies and you shouldn't need my help. Guys, it's been Jace Two Cents. I hope this video has helped you in some way. I uh, hope I didn't bore you or put you guys to sleep, but the holiday season's coming up here and a lot of people are gonna be looking at upgrading their computer or asking Santa or grandma or whatever for some power supplies or whatever. And if that's the case, hopefully you guys now know what it is you're looking for. And if you don't, ask down in the comments. I'm sure everyone down here would be willing to try and help uh, because power supplies are really one of those things that are not subjective. They pretty much are black and white when it comes to power supplies. So guys, I'm gonna get the heck on out of here. Follow on Twitter if you guys have any questions too. I'm very active up there. It's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, it's it's kind of busy, but not as flooded as YouTube. Gosh, man, YouTube comments and, and messages are just, ooh, there's a lot. All right, guys, I'm gonna get on out of here. As always, I hope to see you guys in the next one.